Cross my heart and hope to die Welcome to my dark side Hi everyone, in this video I will show you how you can use AI to turn real videos into a stylized animation. You guys have been asking for this tutorial all over the comments, so let's get right into it. All we're gonna need for the animation part is a stable internet connection and a Google Drive account. When it comes to the transition that many of you have seen on my Instagram and YouTube shorts, we will be using Adobe After Effects so stick around till the end of the video for that part. To start, head over to Google search and type in this query right here. Open the first link that says version 5.2 warp public. First things first, go to file and copy the document over to your personal drive. Let's go ahead and close the original file. You can rename this if you'd like to. Next, click on this icon here to open up the file directory, click on upload, select the video which you want to stylize and click OK. Once uploaded, the video will show up under the file directory as you can see here. Now scrolling down, the document does look a little bit overwhelming. There are a lot of inputs that if assigned certain values will determine how our end result will look like. Now in this video, I won't go into the details of what each line or setting does, but I will share with you guys which settings are the most important and the best values that worked for me. This will get easier as you experiment more with it. And also if you check right here under tutorial, you can see that the most important variables are listed down and explained. On top of that, there is a direct link to a cheat sheet inside which there's more detailed explanation of each parameter. So make sure you check that out. Let's go back to the collab document and play around with the settings. You can keep these enabled. Let's scroll down to number two, diffusion and clip model settings. Make sure the diffusion model is set to this one. The rest looks fine to me, so let's not mess with it. Moving on to number three. Now these are some of the most important settings here. Batch name is simply the name of the folder under which the output frames will be saved. So you can change it if you want to. Now steps controls how precise and detailed the output is going to be. The higher the number, the more time it will take to process. And for me, 333 has worked great with this clip. So I'm gonna go with that. Here, it's important to set the exact same dimensions as your input video. In my case, it's 720 by 1280. And the reason I didn't choose a higher resolution video is mainly because it would take much longer time to process. We are sacrificing details in this case. But at the end of the video, I will show you another tool you can use to enhance and upscale the final animation. For clip guidance settings, let's go with 50,000, set the TV scale to 500, the range scale to 195, and the saturation scale to this value. Let's change this to 1, which according to the cheat sheet will speed up the process. Finally, set the init scale to 15,000 and the skip steps value to 300. Now I've tried changing these settings several times before and so far this combination has worked best for me on several occasions. Unfortunately, I can't guarantee that it would work perfectly on any video input. So again, you might need to experiment with different values. Moving on under animation mode, make sure it's set to video input. Video init path is what we're gonna use to point the AI to our video. And to do that, right click on your original video file right here, copy path and paste it inside this field. All right, now extract nth frames is set to two, which means the AI will only process every second frame. So for example, if your video has 30 frames in total, you will be processing 15 of those frames a bit of a sacrifice of smoothness, yes, but at the same time, we're cutting the processing time down to half. These settings look just fine. Let's scroll further down. Here, let's change the frame scale to 5000. Apart from that, it all looks good, except here, under advanced settings, you can set both these settings ETA and clamp max to 0.3. 
Now, right after that, we have the prompts, and this is gonna be a series of words or phrases that describes what the output image should look like. So basically, the AI will look at your prompt and guide the original video towards the style you described. I will leave a list of my favorite prompts in the description box below so you guys can try them out. And so far, this one has worked really great for me on different occasions. And for this particular one, I have to give credit to another YouTuber. His channel is called Enigmatic E. I saw him using this prompt in one of his videos and I really loved the outcome. He also has a bunch of videos where he dives deeper into Disco Diffusion and other AI tools. So if you want to learn more, make sure you check him out. Okay, so far it all looks good. We're ready to run the AI. And to do that, you can either run each and every one of these steps individually, or if you're lazy like me, simply go over to runtime and choose run all, and it will automatically run through the steps one by one. You will also get this window asking you to connect your Google Drive. So make sure you have a few gigs of space there and click on connect, choose your Google account and allow. The processing time will vary from one step to the other. It might take a few minutes before it starts stylizing your video. So sit back and relax while it runs. Once it gets to number four, diffuse, that's when you'll be able to have a preview of the frames being processed. The progress bar under the image refers to the single frame progress and the one above indicates the progress of the entire animation. Now, every time a frame is processed, it will be saved directly in your Google Drive. You'll find a new folder inside your drive called AI, inside which there's a subfolder called Disco Diffusion. Open that, open images out, open the batch folder, and here you'll find all the stylized frames along with the text file that contains all the settings you've used. Once the process is complete, select all the stylized frames inside this folder and download them to your computer. Google Drive will archive the files. I've already extracted mine inside this folder right here. And to stitch them back together into an animation, we will be using Adobe After Effects. So let's open that. Right click here and choose Import File. First, let's bring in the original video and drag it over this icon here to create a new composition. Next, to import the stylized frames, select the very first one, make sure PNG sequence is enabled, and import. Let's drag the animation sequence down to our composition. I noticed that Disco Diffusion often messes up the width of the frames, so make sure you match it back to the original dimensions. Another thing we need to adjust here is the length of the animation. Simply hold down Alt and drag the animation layer towards the end to stretch it out. Great. And this is how it looks like so far compared to the original clip. Not bad at all. And to make it a bit more interesting, let's create a cool transition effect. Go to Layer, Solid. Let's call this one Mask and click OK. First of all, hide the newly created solid and on the animation layer, switch the track mat to alpha. Let's hide the animation for now. Move over to where you want the transition to start. I'm going with the kick action as a reference here. And now drag the solids in point to this time code. And using the ellipse tool, let's draw a circle mask here. Open the mask properties and toggle the stopwatch on the mask path to be able to add keyframes and animate it over time. Move a few frames forward and scale the mask all the way up beyond the video borders, just like that. And I think we can go back to the first keyframe and scale the mask all the way down. Perfect. Now let's toggle the animation back on and have a look. All right, cool. The fundamental part of the transition is there, but let's stylize it a bit further. Select the mask layer, press Ctrl and D on your keyboard to duplicate it. Let's name this one Saber, toggle its visibility, head over to the Effects tab and look for Saber. Double click to add it in. Under Customize Core, change the core type to Layer Masks. And under Render Settings, let's change the Composite to Transparent. 
all the way up. Let's change the preset to electric, increase both glow bias and glow spread a bit. Same goes for the core size. I think it looks cool like this, except we have a small issue at the beginning here. And I think it's because the layer mask is too small. If you run into the same problem, just drag this in point to the next frame, just like that. Now we also want the animation to appear at the same time as the transition effect. So let's drag the in point all the way here to match the saber layer. Let's have a quick look. There we go, it looks really good. Now all that's left to do is export the video, but before that, let's give the composition a proper name. Go to composition, add to Adobe Media Encoder, choose an output folder, and then start rendering. Now, as I told you guys earlier, I used a 720p clip, so the image quality wasn't so great. But luckily, there's another AI tool that we can use to enhance and upscale our video to a higher resolution. The software is called Topaz Video AI, and I've been using it a lot lately to restore video details and enhance low resolution footage. So let's open Topaz Video AI, import the animation. I think I want to upscale it twice the original size. To add some smoothness to the animation, you can also enable frame interpolation and hit export. The upscaled video will be saved in the same output folder by default. And just by looking at the preview here, you can see that the upscaled version looks sharper and much more detailed, which I honestly find really impressive. Now finally, if you found this video useful, make sure to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future uploads. I'd love to see what you guys create with Disco Diffusion, so feel free to share your animations with me on Instagram or Discord. And if you have questions about any part of this process, make sure to drop them in the comments. I really read all of them. Other than that, stay creative and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.